Okay, we're going to start by mounting this between centers. I could use a ruler and cross here, but when you got an uneven piece, frankly, I'm, I've made this little template, and I find it easier to just look for uniform corners on each, each side, and that works for me. Mark it with a center punch from Harbor Freight. I spared no expense. Come over on this side. Touches there. Hangs off a little bit on each side. And there we go. Okay. I'm using my Robert Sorby Step Center. And we're just going to put this between centers. Bring up tailstock. Lock it down. Change tool rests. So a little bit bigger. Got a little bit of a crack here, a little bit of a knot. Uh, got a little bit of a feature there. Not a problem. I think we can work through that. Okay. Gonna drop this just a little bit. So first thing we're going to do is turn this round twin centers using a spindle roughing gouge. Turn it on. Slowly bring up the speed. Probably 16, 1800, somewhere in there. Make of the tool, ride the bevel, lift the handle till it's up. For my particular lathe, I know I can put a short pencil here on my uh, live center, and this will give me just about the perfect size for my normal jaws. Then I can kind of eyeball it on the other side to make sure that they're there. I'm going to use my wide parting tool, my, my uh, beating and parting tool. It's 8 millimeters wide. I find this great for making a good size tenon with at least. All right, you're going to go in straight. Then you're going to drop the handle. And take a peeling cut. Okay, now I'm going to take this off and decide which end is going to be the top or the bottom if it makes a difference. For this particular piece of wood, I don't think it's going to make a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a chuck. Use my normal jaws. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and mark where I think the top ought to be. Here's the rough drawing uh, for the shape I'm going for, and I use my Fibonacci uh, scales to mark a proportion of approximately one to one to three. I'm going to part off with a thin parting tool. I use this one eighth inch because the handle's a little longer than the, the one I'd rather use, which is too small for the leverage to cut a blank this deep. So I part it down. Just coming in here. Got to slow down as it goes to the middle because the RPM is the same, but the miles per hour slows down as you get to the, the center. Just come in there like that. We're just okay. I tried to cut down a little bit uh, toward the center to leave a little hole for a for the drill bit to follow, but because I left a little bump in the middle, it certainly didn't center it very well. getting just a little bit of tear out in here uh, so I, I want to get as smooth a surface as possible for that I really like this Hunter uh, 
nanocarbide cup scraper. This is not anything like your flat, easy wood wood tool. Let's see if I can get you a little close up of that. And cutting this is already at a dropped front with a very slight angle, so it has exactly the angle that I need to come in there and make this cut, cutting with the tool just about flat. Now I'm going to sand the inside because I don't get another chance to come back to, to this. I'm also going to drill a hole all the way through it for the knob. So let's go ahead and, and do that. I'm going to use a half an inch uh, drill bit. The reason I'm drilling it from the inside is I've got this thing uh, exactly centered and tur turning with the same axis as the uh, as the lip of the bowl. In addition, any tear out that I get from, from drilling is going to be on the back side that's going to be uh, eliminated. If I drilled from the other side, after I finish this, I could have a little bit of tear out, and I don't want that. I'm going to slow the speed down a little bit, maybe around 800. Don't have to be super speedy with drilling. And then I'm just going to slowly turn it and let it find center using a half inch drill bit, portrait bit. There we go. Through. All right, starting with uh, 120 grit with uh, sanding lubricant to keep the dust down. I'm going to sand the inside. Then I'll go through all the grits. Now, I do not sand the tenon. I want that to be raw wood. Okay. Again, because we can't come back to this, I'm going to go ahead and, and finish it. I'm going to use some friction polish. That's basically a shellac-based shellac and alcohol and a little bit of wax in it. I usually use Minwax Antique Oil and I may do that on the outside but I don't want anything that's going to take a long time to cure on the inside to get rid of the smell because uh, that's a turn off to people when they open up a box and it can retain that smell for a long time. So. Okay, I'm using a piece of ebony rod that I've had for some time uh, it's, oh, just a little bit under a, an inch. It's too long to hold in the chuck without getting some chattering, I'm afraid. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off a piece that I feel like will be long enough for this project. This is very hard wood. Could speed up some. Come back, widen it, cut, I don't want to find it. So I face off the front with a little bit of a scraping uh, cut with this half inch spindle gouge and then I start using my beating and parting tool to take it down to a half inch uh, tenon. I guess I better mark it to have some idea how high that collar is going to be. That cove can't be any wider than the tool, so I'm going to keep that in mind as well. Just get this speed up, and I'm just going to start. It's not quite running through. I'm going to switch to a smaller tool. Okay, I've taken the, uh, finished with the, the top for the time being, I'm putting the base on, put on my normal, normal, normal chuck, tighten this down pretty good. Now I want to skim the, the, kind of clean up the, the top surface here, we'll do that with the, uh, 
half inch spindle gouge. Just pick up the cut about here. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and use the base as a jam chuck. So we're going to get a very tight fit for the lid to go in there. We're going to fish top the lid and then we'll open it up a little bit more later. So uh, get a feel for how much it's got to go in there. I mark, I measure and mark the, with uh, the dividers on how I'm going to hollow out the lid a little bit. Don't touch the upper point. <laughs> I'm going to use a box scraper, getting that, uh, getting that, uh, that side lined up parallel with the uh, bedway. It's got less than a 90 degree tip on it, and I go straight in. Measure carefully, adjust, do some trial fits and adjust as necessary until you get a very, very snug fit. And then use tape. Make sure you, you put the tape on the right direction where it's coming to you and not unraveling as it's uh, turning. I measure the depth of, of where the knob is going to extend because I want it to extend maybe an eighth of an inch through, through the, uh, the lid itself. Again, I refer back to my drawing to get a feel for, for the shape. And then I start rough shaping the outside of the lid. using a half inch spindle gouge. Just bring it around. And now I'll speed up a little bit since this is a little bit repetitive. Okay, I brought up tailstock support. Uh, I took off the, the tape. I'm refining the lid a little bit to get it, the thickness right for the the knob to show through, so I'm going to take it on and off a couple of times to, to check it. And I'm going to put a tiny little bead here, but but this is very fairly thick, so I can I've got some some room here. I'm going to switch to a very small detail gouge. This happens to be a quarter quarter inch detail gouge. This is just the way I'll just flip over the handle. than I was expecting it to be on getting this through hole. Well, it's easy enough to check. Just pop it off and oh I got a lot of thickness there to remove so I can refine the shape easily. So I can I'm just using my digital calipers here, <laughs> and it's thinnest right here, but I don't have to be concerned about that. Okay. The first one I made had a stopped hole, which means it wasn't drilled all the way through, and I believe in hindsight that is the easier way to go. It, I didn't have much glue service, and it was ingrained, but that was all right because it's not. It was a loose fit, so it wasn't going to get a lot of strain. That's 
looking pretty close. Get up easily there. When you got little ripples on something like this, I think the whole idea is to just refine it with a skew on the side. Because I can get right in there with a corner like this. The negative rake scraper. Easily eliminate those ripples. Bring it around. Any transition to high points are easily removed. This is ingrained, so it does, does very well with this type of scraping action. Sometimes I find myself compromising on the thickness, thinking, well, it's a little heavier than I want, but I don't want to go any further. But sometimes you just got to go for it. Boxes are high art, and details matter. And that's this plumber reamer. I find this great for when I'm trying to refine a hole where I've got a tenon a little too large. Unfortunately, I've got to take this off to use it, but that's okay. We found out how easy that was by so just popping it. So I'm going to come in here with this and just twist it a couple of times. And let those flukes do the work just a little bit. Yeah, that's a nice fit. Nice snug fit. Remember, take it from the right direction so it won't unravel because it's coming towards you. We're going to put this bead in here. Twist it in. And then tap it. And let's hope it runs true. That's true enough. So now I've got to decide what my bead shape is. I gotta say, looking at it, the bead is taller than I want. So I'm gonna bring up tailstock support. And I'm not gonna create any damage because it's very hard wood and I'm gonna take off, take the size down a little bit. So it won't make any difference. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shape this a little bit to a little bit different type of shape. Instead of a sphere, I think I'm going to have it a little bit of a flame or a little bit of a Okay, now that I got the lid done, now it's time to finish refining the body. Before I can start hollowing it out, I need to determine exactly where the bottom's going to be and get a feel for the shape. And I think I want the bottom to actually be right about here. I don't want to take the whole thing. Sometimes the form is more important than how much room on a box. Uh, so I'm going to start taking it down, tucking it in somewhere in, somewhere in there. Uh, I'm also going to add a, a little bit of a, a detail. So that's going to be a bead here and a smaller bead here. And then I'm maybe, yeah, a bead. And then on the inside of that bead, maybe a burn line. And then a place to do a little zen tangle. So that'll help. Having a bead there helps disguise the join. And then I'm going to roll this bead over a little bit. Take some of that away. I'm going to take some of this away. The bead's going to stand just a little bit proud. I'm going to go ahead and mark the bottom of it by taking it down some. And I think I'll just take it down a little bit with this beading and parting tool. That's going to be the bottom of the box. Okay, the one trick I would tell you when you're sanding is sand like somebody else is buying the paper. It's a tool. If it quits cutting, it's no longer sharp. If it's not sharp, it won't cut. Now I'm going to come in here and put a couple of tiny little V grooves on the inside here on each side of the bead. Like that. And I'm doing that because this is going to be where I'm going to put a small burn mark. Because I'm going to decorate the inside here with pyrography. This is some nichrome wire like you'd find in a toaster oven. 
And no, I think that is the right size. Anything bigger would have looked too heavy. I think it's important to note that I want the inside to mimic the outside, so you need to do the outside shape first. And I'm happy with that. All I need to do is do a little sanding. So now we can go ahead and start hollowing. And we've got to remember, we have got to relieve the inside here just a little bit so that lid won't be a snug fit. It'll just ease in there. And we'll do that in a moment. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and drill a depth hole. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put a little, little divot here. So hopefully that drill will track dead down center. So I'm going to use my hand drill. I want to measure. I have different marks on the hand drill to give me some idea how deep to go. And then I can approximate that, that next distance. I want about a quarter inch short of that. That'll work. So now I can start hollowing just like I did the lid. I find a half inch to be a good size for a wide open box like this. It's, it cuts very well. I want to aim it somewhere around 10 to 10 to 10 30 and just sweep the cut. Kind of pivot it. Now, I could create a little ledge in there, but there's no reason for it uh, because the way the box is just going to inset in there, so I'm going to have a continuous side. I'll clean that up there. So I use this to and find the inside, get rid of tool marks. This hunter tool works great. Get in here in the corner a little bit. Let's see how deep the inside is compared to the outside by using my little Harbor Freight depth gauge. Standing on the inside with this uh, Wood Turner's Wonders uh, drill in a two inch bit just to clean up the bottom. I'll do this with 120, probably do the rest of it by hand. I want the bottom to be very smooth. And now I'm going to use some of that sanding lubricant to, or abrasive paste to really polish the inside. Support the back of my wrist. Now I'm going to take several passes to get this right. dead true. So this makes it really easy for me to come in here with a spindle gouge and clean that up. So I'm going to use my 3 8 inch spindle gouge and just start working it. Let's speed up a little bit. Just wasting wood. in here riding the bevel, pointing at oh maybe oh two o'clock. 
Just skinning the edge just a little bit. I'm not going to go into any details on pyrography because it's probably duller than dirt to watch, but if you're interested, just click on the link to a video I've got on Zentangle and pyrography. But a couple of quick tips. Uh, using the same wood with a scrap, you want to kind of test the temperature, make sure it's not too hot. This appears to be maybe too hot. So dial it down just a, just a bit. Use the appropriate tip and and... I've come up with uh, you know a set of uh, just a rough idea for a very simple pattern. You can see the importance of going ahead and burning these in while it's on the lathe. Otherwise, it'd be very difficult to get a nice uniform border. And I add my name. If you're interested in a video on Zentangle, you might click on the link above. Uh, here's a picture of the bowl, the final box. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.